Hi all, this is Dave out in Western Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm putting together a very, very short and sweet presentation for you, YouTubers. Uh, I'm a chemistry professor in Western Pennsylvania, USA, and uh, one of my areas of interest, research interest, is uh, the relationship of between chemistry and uh, painting, art, fine art visual art and uh i'm an amateur painter uh self-taught but um very good opportunities i think uh for young people if they combine the study of chemistry and uh painting uh perhaps as a double major they have a very good chance of getting into uh, aspects of conservation art forensic art um what I want to show you here in this very short uh, video is an approach I take in so-called uh, fresco seco technique. And uh, I pour concrete. I use uh, silicon molds that I pick up at the thrift store, rectangular, oval. And uh, I pour concrete. And uh, after it hardens, I apply one or two layers of uh, non-sanded grout, white grout. I pick it up at the hardware store and uh, mix it up in the right ratio with water, blend it together, and I put a little bit of acrylic acid, white acrylic, uh, uh, white acrylic paint in, uh, commercial or latex. Uh, I don't want to get into the nuances between acrylic for artwork and. Uh, uh, latex paints, but uh, either one, white, and I blend maybe a quarter of that in with the grout. And uh, I apply one or two coats, fills in any holes on the uh, concrete surface, and uh, that will serve as my plaster. Um, what I want to show you here is one of the approaches I'm developing for uh, fresco seco and related techniques particularly for use in the uh, chemistry lab, what artists would call the studio. And uh, many artists love experimentation, uh, willing to try new things. And I may add, in my field, many chemists are theoretically oriented and don't spend a lot of time in the lab. So, but there is a close connection between uh, art and chemistry. It goes back to the cave arts in Europe and even rock art. Um, so anyway, there's the grout that I use. And, uh, what I, what I do is to make up an aqueous solution of the grout. I have plenty of working time and I add a generous amount of very cheap. I get them from Walmart, the, uh, Apple acrylics, any type of water-based, uh, acrylic paints. I use the real cheap ones. That's my point. Nice variety of, uh, colors. And uh, I add that in and I mix it up pretty good. Then I will pour that. Here's some of the Apple barrel paints that I uh, will show in this presentation. Very inexpensive. And uh, I mix that up. It blends together beautifully. Don't use watercolor. Don't use the uh, poster paint, tempera poster paints. Uh, don't use gouache. The binder's in there are not compatible with the aqueous grout and you'll get a mess. But the acrylics will blend very nicely in minutes at what I would say is ambient temperature. Right now I'm doing this work, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, after I mix it up, after I mix it up, uh, I then will uh, pour it onto it works what works best is get get yourself a cast iron uh a cast iron uh pan and i use these um these hot plates that i get from walmart i get them for about twenty dollars usd they're readily available and they work very well now my point is i'm doing this work in my garage this is for the benefit of artists. If I'm going to show you expensive uh, scientific instrumentation, well, an artist is going to say that's well and nice, but I can't get a hold of that. 
and I really want to encourage many artists to in those working in small studios uh, to think about trying to perhaps work in other uh, uh, genres. The oil with rags, turpentine, vapors, solvent. Um, it's something to consider. Now, if you're going to go to a high setting, do not use that silicone mold on the right. I picked them up in the thrift stores. Uh, they can be very expensive if you buy them on eBay or Amazon. You can make your own from silicone caulking. There's videos for that. But I picked them up in the thrift stores. Now, if you're going to crank the heat up, don't use the silicone mold uh, on the hot plate. Here, I'm going with a low temperature over time, and uh, I want to drive the water off. So you can see I have on the right a blue hue, acrylic grout mixture. I'm driving the water off. I have not seen any color changes. This is important for artists. When I'm driving the water off, I said to myself, maybe the polyacrylic in there, the binder, maybe it'll start to decompose and change the color. But... They look pretty good, and uh, at a low temperature today, I let it go for two hours. You'll know. You'll you'll get a spatula, scrape it around. You'll know they'll be nice and dry. And after you cool it down, oh boy, they you can break them up. This this pigment, grout pigment combination. You can grind them with a big large spoon. I use a ball peen hammer. Here's an illustration. Uh, scrape some out and gently hit it with the ball peen hammer, uh, hammer or even uh, a large spoon. And of course, I did. I don't have at home here uh, mortar and pestle, but it, that can be ground into a very fine powder. And that's very important. You can sieve it as well if you wish, uh, because all artists know particle size of the pigment or pigment formulation is very important. You can make yourself some very nice pigments this way that you can store indefinitely. And uh, my reactions here, working with these, very easy to do. You could set this tray up very safely. You're driving water off. And now you have uh, basically uh, the acrylic pigment, the polyacrylic binder. The vehicle water has been driven off for now. And uh, cement. And the very important, very fine sand. See, that's what's in grout. Very fine sand. There's no aggregate. You're not getting uh, putting large particles in that gives you uh, a, a traditional cement. No, you, you want the benefits of the grout. Uh, here's what I do then. I took a little bit of that uh, pigment mixture. And you could do this a couple of ways. You could use some Portland cement, but don't use the beige colored. You can get white Portland cement, and there's a hefty amount of calcium oxide in there. You have to be careful not to breathe that, get it on your skin. Um, you can use water putty, uh, Durham's water putty. That's fine, but it has color. It's tan. And uh, if you want... Take a little more of the trusty grout. Take a little bit. You're going to use it as a binder. Add some water to it. Not too much. Uh, stir it up pretty good. Give it about 5 or 10 minutes. To start to uh, uh, form a nice suspension. And then you take your pigment powder. I would mull it. I would add that very fine pigment mixture right in and stir it for about 10 minutes. What I did here is I took a small rectangular uh, concrete platform. It's got two coats of uh, the grout that I told you about. It's dry. And uh, I grabbed a brush and uh, brushed some of the uh, paint on the surface. And remember, I didn't sieve it and didn't really even make a, a wholehearted effort to grind the powder up. You should really with a mortar and pestle. Then you could store them. And I applied that. It'll dry pretty quickly, and you can lightly sand that, 
uh, brush it off any of the larger particles. And uh, I will tell you something, it entrains in there pretty well. Anybody who knows Fresco and really studies, there's a classic 1940 pamphlet on Fresco art you can find on the internet for free, a PDF file and download it. When you add those paints, they're not really penetrating into the fresh plaster, the, the paints. They are only going in lightly into that surface. They are reacting really with the, um, the top surface of the plaster and your limestone plaster, which is uh, calcium hydroxide, is going to, in the air, turn into calcium carbonate. It's very interesting. There's more than uh, you would imagine with the different techniques of uh, fresco, but I'm talking about fresco seco, where I don't really have the fresh uh, plaster. I'm using grout as my plaster and it's dry. I put my sketches on there. I draw, I, uh, I do draft work right onto the surface. You could stencil. Uh, you might even try using uh, carbon paper. Um, that's why I put a little bit of acrylic in there, white acrylic. If you try to uh, trace onto pure commercial grout, not going to work. So make sure you get a little bit of white acrylic in there and it works like a charm in most cases. And you can sand down that s the surface to the grout if you wish. Uh, that top layer before you begin to, to do your drawing and uh, artwork. Um, this dries pretty quick. And if you use very fine particles, that is going to be right hefty in get into that uh, grout. And remember, you have cement there. So it's going to be uh, pretty reliable and uh, come out pretty good. Now, here's one of my classic works of art. I'm sure you are going to fall in love with that. Just a little example of um, what you can do with this technique. Here, I had a piece of concrete. I couldn't wait, couldn't give it a day. And I took it out of the mold and it broke on me. And I said, okay, then I'll use it as is. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this. And maybe you try it. And people out there, artists, accomplished artists, can probably take this and run with it. But I think it'd be a very safe technique for you. You can make your range of pigments. You can store them until needed. And then uh, just a little bit of uh, grout mixed up with water. Put your pigment in. And uh, if you use these cheap acrylics, you could save a lot of money. The other thing to do is get your ceramic pigments. And they're going to cost you more money. Or mason stains that pot, uh, ceramic people use in pottery. That's going to cost you more money. So try, try these cheap acrylics and uh, if you're going to do Seco. Now, if you're going to do this on campus or paper, uh, you're going to have to experiment. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to share this with you. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me, here is my website. Thanks for viewing. And I will put up many more, uh, much more detailed um, videos. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now.